Hello coders and thank you for joining us again as we continue the Unity scripting series. This tutorial's code is going to leave off from the last video so if you haven't seen that one yet go ahead and check it out. In this lesson we are going to talk about public variables and the transform function look at. So here we have our cube and we have it moving forward and rotating at hard-coded speeds. Well what if we want to run the game and we don't like the speed it moves or rotates at? Wouldn't it be nice to edit these values at runtime? This is made possible by public variables. From our script, if we declare a public variable, it will be seen in the inspector with an area for us to update the values while the game is running. Let's go back to our character controller script and add two new Vector3 variables at the top, one for velocity and another for rotate velocity. We will initialize these values to what we think might be a standard starting point. Now we need to modify our movement code and the update function. Get rid of any vector math and replace it with our new variables. Now if we look at our object in the inspector panel in Unity, we will see that the script component updates with new modifiable variables. Let's change our velocity vector to 0, 0, 0 for now and press the play button. Now take a moment to modify the rotation values while the game is running and you will see your changes happening instantly. Okay, so this is a great tool for polishing and tweaking your gameplay. Now I'll slowly increase and decrease the velocity to watch the cube move back and forth. When you exit play mode, your changes will be reset. So remember the values you really liked so you can replace them outside of play mode. Let's duplicate some of these cubes by pressing Ctrl D and giving them all different values. Okay, so that's going to complete our character controller for now, so let's jump over to our camera controller script. Our goal is to have the camera watch as the race unfolds. Conveniently, Unity's transform component has a built-in method called lookAt. This method is going to accept another transform as a parameter. Naturally, the transform that we pass to the lookAt method is going to be the transform we want to look at. The trick is going to be getting one of the cubes' transform components. There are several ways to accomplish this, but probably the easiest is going to be by creating a public variable for it. So let's add a public transform variable first call it player transform. We will not assign this variable within the script, instead we will have to rely on ourselves to give it a value from the inspector. Now in the update method we can say transform.lookAt and pass player transform as a parameter. That's actually all we have to do for this script. Now we can go back to Unity and drag the script onto the camera. You will notice that the player transform slot in the script component is empty, so we can either drag the object we want the camera to look at from the hierarchy to the slot, or we can click on the little circle next to the slot and search for an object there. Notice we can just drag a game object onto a transform slot. Unity automatically extracts the transform component from whatever object you assign to the slot. This is actually true for any component you might have on an object. Let's say our public variable was an image and our game object had an image component. We could actually just drop the object on the slot and Unity would automatically extract an image component for us. Now we can press play and watch our work pay off. Now we learned about another transform method and we learned how to utilize public variables for gameplay tweaking. Next time we will learn how to get multiple scripts communicating with each other and how to get more secure references to game objects within our games. If you enjoyed this tutorial, show us some love and subscribe. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.